you a fan of the Olympics? Now, the Olympic Games, be it summer or winter, are always a popular topic. However, this year, they are certainly not without their controversial side with the human rights issues that the Western nations are stating are occurring in Xinjiang or the, um, let's say, the political situation in Hong Kong have been a little bit more at the forefront than they usually would be with an Olympic Games. But China themselves are determined that these games will be ones to remember for by virtue of being the most technological advanced ever. So especially in the day to day lives of the athletes and the journalists who are there, then there is a lot of tech that's running in the background. It's extremely high tech. And China is determined that these will be the safest and greenest games ever. China certainly has one of the highest levels of digitalization of any country worldwide, and they are determined to showcase that within the games. There are robots pretty much everywhere at these games. They're greeting athletes, they're showing people where to go, they're being used for disinfecting purposes, and they're also being used in the restaurants. So if we look, first of all, at the topic of restaurants, then here, really from kitchen to table, the whole process is often being carried out purely by robots. So in the kitchen, there are robots who are flipping burgers and stir frying vegetables. And then the food is being carried to tables using a system attached to the ceiling on like kind of wires, like, um, like a rail, and it brings the food to the right place setting. And in the bar area, there's also a robot who is even able to handle glasses and shake cocktails. If you saw the opening ceremony, you would know that this was designed to underscore the fact that Beijing is actually the only city in the world to have hosted both summer and winter games. And they did this with really a lot of light and symbolism and a whole load of computer generated effects such as snow and ice. The backdrop of the pandemic, it's hardly surprising that health tracking and health surveillance are pretty much at the forefront as China is still following a zero COVID policy for domestic Chinese and a zero spread outside the Olympic bubble policy for the period of the games. That means that in addition to the disinfectant robots that I mentioned before, there are also smiley face robots around the Olympic venues and in the park who will remind people that they should put their masks on properly if it sees that they are not doing so already. Then on top of that, there are smart beds for all of the athletes in the Olympic village, and these can measure vital signs or any changes, sudden changes in temperature or sleeping behavior that might indicate that an athlete was coming down with something. And these changes, these vital statistics can be directly communicated to the athlete's coach if that's required. Now, a lot of athletes have been posting on social media about these beds because compared to the beds in Tokyo, which were pretty much cardboard boxes and a very thin sleeping pad on top of it, these have been actually designed for comfort so that the athletes can get a really good night's sleep. For the first time during these games, the digital UN has actually been rolled out for foreign visitors. So within the Olympic facilities, visitors, athletes or journalists, coaches, etc., can either pay by renminbi in cash. 
they can pay with a visa card or they can pay by digital UN. Interestingly, both Alipay and WeChat Pay are not allowed within the Olympic venues. And this is presumably because the digital UN is actually struggling to make headway against these readily available electronic wallets that the Chinese population are very used to using. So they're making sure that in the showcase of the games that they can introduce foreign visitors to use their own state owned wallet. There's also the option to have a, a swipeable wristband that also can be used as a wallet, which can be loaded up with cash at automatic machines. One of the most impressive parts, though, of the digital world, which is being showcased during these games, are the fact that the, there is 5G connectivity everywhere in the Olympic venues. And this 5G connectivity is not just 5G connectivity. It also is enabling 8K ultra high definition streaming so that high quality videos are available everywhere within the complexes, which when you consider this is winter games and it's got the mountains and so on, this is, this is a feat to really look at and be impressed by. Beijing has even installed um, 5G connectivity all the way in the high-speed rail link, which goes between Beijing and the Olympic Village and the Olympic Resorts in Zhangjia, Call around 170 kilometers north of Beijing. And when you think how many tunnels and through the mountains that it's going through, then this is really very impressive indeed. And in order to make the lives a little bit easier of the foreign athletes, coaches, journalists, etc., who are attending the games, then the Great Firewall has also been opened up a little for participants, but not for the Chinese who are actually within the Olympic bubble and who are allowed to watch the games as attendees, only for those foreign visitors. So during this time, it's possible to send, for example, WhatsApp messages, although potentially video calls could be a little bit spotty, I would imagine. There's also quite a lot of tech going on in the background, which might not be quite so obvious to foreign visitors. So, for example, Beijing has been determined to showcase innovation and has opened up as a competition for people to bring their ideas. So this meant things like wind tunnels or weather forecasting technology have been um, used around the games for the first time. And also, there have been a set of mini apps um, within the WeChat ecosystem, which have been prepared to educate the Chinese people about the benefits of winter sports and generally about healthy activities. These Olympics should be the greenest ever, as I mentioned at the beginning, and Beijing has pledged to make them net carbon neutral. So one of the points which is most important towards this is the energy production for the games, which is all wind and solar energy from the Jiangbei region, which is north of Beijing in Hubei province. The vehicles which are being used at Zhangjiakou and between the venues are 85% energy saving vehicles. There are 700 buses which are using either hydrogen cells or lithium batteries and also other vehicles that are being used around the, the venues, around 80 vehicles, also with hydrogen cells, which is a huge number if you think about the 
number of athletes, there are almost 3,000 athletes involved in the games who have to be moved all around to be at their events on time and in the right place. So additionally, if we're looking at what has Beijing done that is green for these events, they've repurposed five of the venues from 2008 so that they didn't actually have to make these huge new expensive constructions which are also very wasteful in terms of materials often and the water cube national aquatic center is now called of course the ice cube one innovation which i really like the idea of is that in the four um, ice rinks, which have been newly built for the games, they are all using natural carbon dioxide refrigerants from re recycled sources to actually make the ice, rather than using the HFCs, which are more usual for ice rinks. And this is the first time that this kind of technology has actually been used in an Olympic games. So it's really the case, all the venues are being repowered with renewable energy. And you can see that Beijing is making huge efforts to keep this as carbon neutral as possible. Of course, though, there are always some downsides. And this area where the games are taking place is actually a really dry area. So they're suffering with a lack of snow and generally they have a lack of water and so one of the main criticisms has been that um, the artificial snow the huge amounts of artificial snow obviously which are necessary for these games are pulling water out of a system which is already under pressure due to being in an extremely dry area however this pledge to be carbon neutral will be achieved say Beijing has calculated by in the end um, planting 1.2 million trees in the north of China as a reforestation project. Yeah so these are the main let's say tech and green initiatives which have been initiated for these Olympic Games. I'd be interested to know which one are you most impressed by? Drop me a comment below, subscribe to this channel. And if you've not already signed up for my weekly newsletter, then please go ahead and do so. And I'll drop a link to that below too. If you want to expand internationally, subscribe to my YouTube channel and sign up for my weekly newsletter and blog post at the link in the comments.